Live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here in, live in Las Vegas for IBM Insight. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, and uh, we'd love talking to all the uh, influencers, thought leaders, experts, but we'd love to bring in also the IBM uh, tech athletes. Bob Picciano, Senior Vice President of the Analytics Group here with IBM. I know he's got a short schedule, but uh, great to have you in. Swing by theCUBE and share your color and what's going on. On the keynote, so give us okay. a quick highlights. What was the key things? A couple of things that we would like to talk about, but give us the quick uh, highlights of uh, the keynote. Sure, look, John, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you guys are here again. Uh, I think this is a great venue where people can actually hear a diverse set of opinions about what's going on here at the conference uh, from wherever they are. You guys reach out very wide in the marketplace, so uh, we're grateful that you came here um, so that the story about all the innovation that's happening here is going to get out into the marketplace. So the keynote, I thought it was great today. It allowed me to talk about something I'm very passionate about, which is I see that we're at a new inflection point on an IT value creation basis. And that inflection point is really an inflection point that moves from process-based value creation to insight-based value creation. And it you know, is right in line with our view that we're moving out of the programmatic era of computing and into the cognitive era of computing. And when you think about the programmatic era, it was all about codification of business process and logic and driving that into applications and industrializing business process, right? But when you really, when you think about the insight-based economy, it really has to do with the deployment of rich analytics, analytics-empowered individuals that are really going to get the discipline of predictive analytics employed for them in the business process that they're trying to serve and optimize, and that will allow the organizations to scale. And that insight that they're going to derive from that data in context of the business process, in context to the person and systems of engagement, in context to the business uh, areas, that is going to be uh, where the value curve so is going to So process improvement, you know, go back to the Drucker books and all the management consulting things we've read and we were getting our MBAs and trying to study up. That's old school, right? I mean, that's client server, that's computing, adds value there. Certainly process improvement is great, but now you mentioned this new insight. Mm -hmm. Just drill down on that a piece, be specific. I mean, there's still process improvement happening, some sure. transformation going on in parallel to this new insight. What is that, what is that dynamic? Can you just yep. uh, unpack that a little bit? I will, and I'm careful to call this an inflection point, not a shift, right? And there's a distinction between an inflection point and a shift. You know, in a shift, everybody moves into that new space. In an inflection point, in fact, both continue to be important, but that new value creation that gets additive on top of the improvements that we're continuing to make in a process-based economy continue to exist. And one of the things that fuels more efficiency in that process-based space is really cloud computing. And all of the economies that are available in cloud computing, and importantly, the integration of hybrid cloud or hybrid IT between using the efficiencies of systems of record that clients have already invested into today in collaboration with new services that they're going to bring online, either in dedicated private yeah. clouds or public clouds. And, and more importantly, I think really, as it relates to the data, I think it's about data and cloud and engagement. So I see more companies now concerned, probably more so with the data that's available to them outside their firewall and how to use that in a collaborative manner with the data that's inside their firewall. So they need a fluid data layer that matches the fluidity of the cloud as yeah. it has done for business processes. So what you're saying is the process improvement is that external is a process that has no process. That's unstructured data. <laughs> I mean, it's, there's really no process. You don't know what's going to come at you, whether it's Internet of Things, consumer experience, live events. Well, I do think all I mean, of those are still in the context of a business problem and process. <laughs> Even Internet of Things, right? Yeah. Maybe we're looking at uh, asset optimization or predictive maintenance and quality. So the business process there is about how I ensure that my capital investments are going to continue to stay online as long as they can and introduce the least amount of disruption to the clients I'm serving and the clients they're serving. So I still think that's the business process. Now, unstructured data has an enormous role in the context uh, of Dave wants to jump to... in, but I want to add one more thing. One problem <laughs> that we see in like programming right now, the old namespace console, oh yeah, here's my namespace, set it up and do all that stuff, okay. is a data space, observation space, as Jeff sure. Jonas talks about it. Mm -hmm. Customers set, the big problem that we're seeing is customers set up their d data space and they think, we're good. Yeah. And then new data comes in, they got to re-engineer their infrastructure. How are you guys, is that software the magic bullet there? What is the key 
aspect that's going to change that too. I set up some base infrastructure, I can stand up stuff, software, yeah. and yeah. then how can I be agile? Look, I, I think it is not just software. I think it's very specific discipline of software. And I think it's around context computing. And so, you know, data changes data. And sometimes that data is a temporal element that's going to allow me to go back and reassess other decisions that I've made up to this point because it could significantly change that next decision I make. So this aspect of context, especially as it relates to all the ambitions around omni-channel interactions, richer systems of engagement, when you go out into any of those spaces, the notion of a master data object, whether it's a person, whether it's a product, uh, whether it's a company, it gets more sparse. Right? It, it's less clear, there's less focus. So you have to use more of the context computing fabric to be able to bring that data uh, alive, so to speak, and utilize more real-time influences to understand what's going on in the business moment and how I should assess the, the best decision I can make at that time. And many times, the thing that I learn has to go back and update the past to be able to give me the best insight into the future. I'm intrigued by this notion of a fluid data layer, Bob. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at historically your clients, within any industry, whether it's finance, manufacturing, healthcare, media, they've built their stacks, and those stacks are hardened, whether you know, sales, distribution, production, manufacturing, partnerships, the ecosystem, cement hardened stacks. And this fluid data layer seems to be changing that. Um, we heard from Pratt & Whitney this morning, yeah. uh, earlier, did a great on, job. on how they're taking advantage of this. Yep. But he, he stressed, look, it's early days. So, yep. so can your clients, how, and how can you help your clients take advantage of this fluid data layer and not just the data layer, it's obviously cloud, it's systems of Fluid analytic layer. So right. the, you've, you've got this digital matrix now emerging, yeah. and it seems to be new business models are riding on top of that. I wonder if you could talk about what you're seeing in that regard. Well look, I mean, I think it's a good point that you raise about the rigidity of some mm. of the client environments as it relates to data processing or analytics processing. Um, and clients that have gone down a route of being proprietarily locked in, and I even see some vendors you know, make an announcement recently about, hey, we're in the cloud now, we're great in the cloud, and then you look at what they're doing, and they're just trying to create new contemporary interfaces into that same proprietary lock-in. So we stepped back from this and we said, look, there's a new reference architecture that really should be laid into the foundation of companies as they think about the role of the chief data officer or chief analytics officer, or as they think about these problem solving arenas. IBM does not pr approach this as a technology problem. It's a business outcome problem. And if you map that reference architecture to the capabilities you already have, it becomes clear what I can use, both in terms of the data that's available and the processing zones or analytic zones that are available, and how that needs to be augmented with new capabilities like context computing or stream computing or new front end capabilities like Watson Analytics, or information privacy, security, and governance, or unstructured data management. Right? All those things sort of light up, if you will, against the contrast of a reference architecture to say, all right, if I want to solve that problem, I really need to have these other zones of capability, these other analytic disciplines, and I don't have them in that existing rigid architecture. So since we're based on all open interfaces with our reference architecture, I think we can come in with agility and help our clients make that difficult traverse. So, and not all customers are going to get this to the same degree of each other, right? So you have a spectrum. Sure. Uh, and so can you discern, and what are the characteristics of those, those organizations, let's keep it a traditional organizations, Fortune 1000, that are actually leveraging that, whether it's that, that, that data fabric or the cloud fabric, the engagement fabric, what are the, can you discern the ones that are sort of get it, I hate to right. use that term, <laughs> yeah. versus the Kool-Aid. Because yeah, sure. you know, we all love to talk about the sort of mean, but the, there, there are 10% oh, that are really, there's really good at it. Are you starting to see those guys we are, emerge? We are definitely seeing the standard deviations emerge. Mm. Um, and you know, we've uh, released this research paper around the Generation D uh, enterprises, and those Generation D enterprises are really data savvy, mm. uh, analytics savvy, data centric in the way that they think about things. Now, I see great organizations, I mean Larry is a good example of this, sort of understanding that in order to yep. really get the value of this opportunity, it has to be a marriage of line of business outcomes with what he can do in an IT fabric. So, you know, very interesting thing that Larry did when he engaged with us is he said, look, I have two years of data. I'm going to give you guys 18 months, and guess what? It's the first 18 months. Now, if you guys are so good, I want you to use your predictive analytics to tell me what happened in that last six months. And we were able to nail with a 98% accuracy what happened in that last six months. Okay, now, who's going to win the World Series? <laughs> 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 I'm in Vegas, I want to put some bets down. Which Watson, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, you know, we, we track a lot of data points yeah. for <laughs> these sorts of things. You're holding that secret <laughs> weapon by <laughs> the tables, like you got nukes and you're not bringing uh, them out Some things I just can't talk <laughs> about. <Yeah. laughs> um, so while we got the World Series, I got to ask you, I know we got a couple minutes left, I asked it earlier, Kansas City Royals obviously got dominant pitching and the Giants are scrappy and they always find a way to win and we were talking uh, just earlier about some of the sports radio commentary and they say yeah. the Giants win because they have a mindset. Sometimes they go up against good pitching and can't sure. hit, but sure. they come and they, how they approach the game is what makes them unique. So I got to ask you, the practitioners that are really pushing us, yeah. scrappy trying to get the inflection point rolling, has got that you know, serious heat coming at him, pitching from, John. no, stop, we shouldn't be changing, it's too expensive. Yeah. How do you approach that? What do you, what's your advice to customers saying, here's an, appro an approach to take? Well look, it's a great, it, it's actually a, you know, a great setup question because it relates to your mm. question as well. It's not about going in and trying to hit the grand slam to win the game in the ninth inning, right? It's about production, right? I mean, I mean production, I mean the way the Giants won uh, you know, game, uh, game four here was really about everybody produced, everybody had a hit. You know, everybody took the opportunity at the plate to contribute something in the form of a single to get the bases around, to get the runners around the bases. Great approach. And, and that's a great approach. So when you think about the quick wins that we engage in with our clients, it's about the line of business and IT agreeing, there's a quick win here. Let's not try to boil the ocean. Let's not try to deploy a full reference architecture or try to drive forklifts around in the data center. Let's identify that single the one that's going to move the ducks around the, the pond, and let's start there, and we'll get the buy-in, and we'll see the Small we'll start a rally. Small ideas. It's because it gets <laughs> infectious, right? And culturally, it becomes infectious, yep, and you get yep. this domino effect. So I think it's hard to bet against the uh, Giants right now with the way they're producing. Uh, let's see, Kansas City's got tough pitching, and their fans are crazy in Kansas City. They're very loyal, and um, I wouldn't be surprised. They could run the table. I'm a little nervous. Not going to count. I'm a Red Sox fan in general, but. Um, <laughs> Well, thanks a lot, I really appreciate you coming on. I'll give you the final word here. What's the, what's the vibe, and obviously Insights now, the new show was called IOD, which is Information On Demand. Obviously the Insight, you nailed the inflection point, love that concept. What's this going to morph into? What's your vision for well, the look, show? You know, it is really about Insight, and it really is about client outcomes. But one of the things I'm very excited about is the speed and the completeness that we're introducing our portfolio as composable services in Bluemix and the cloud, and also with software services when we think we have you know, a differentiated analytics platform. So when you really look around, we've gone and produced, I think, like nobody else has, with the range of data services and the range of analytically powered software services that our clients could take advantage. And when you talk about agility and doing those quick wins, sometimes that's the best place to start. Developers are the new king makers, so we want to put the tools and the jewels in their hands to take this thing to the next level. So comment on the economics of the cloud as a final word. Obviously, there's always the calm before the storm in terms of leverage. The cloud is the ultimate leverage. You look at the economics of what the cloud is. In he was talking about some of the new services, data works. It's mm -hmm. all self-service. I mean, when the flywheel gets going, the economics are pretty significant. You guys have great software presence in there. Mm -hmm. Just share with the folks some of the executive conversation around the economic leverage that's going to come out of this engine of innovation. Yeah, and see, I thought you said I had the last word. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, no, I want you to get that out there one more time. It's too well, good. I do think it's you know it's undeniable. It's about data and cloud and engagement. So I, I even think you know, John, if you stop at just data and cloud, it's not enough. I do think you have to think about what system of engagement, what new analytically powered outcome are you going to drive? How is that going to change the course of me seizing that opportunity or creating a new business model? So I think it really has to be all three, and and that cloud is an ether not just for the productivity of the developer and what they can do in terms of composable services, but also the fluidity of the data access that it gives you both things that are inside the enterprise and to things that are outside the enterprise. Generation D is here, Bob Picciano, Senior Vice President here at IBM Inside the Cube, sharing his uh, insight and, and a drill down on some of these important topics. Data changes data, cognitive computing all happening. This is the Cube here, live in Las Vegas for IBM Insight and the Social Lounge. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>